Welcome to this third part in this video tutorial series about the OpenGL API. So in the previous part we worked with primitives and we had this output. This is some sort of triangle looking thing. So uh, in this part we're going to work with animation. I planned that uh, I'll work with colors too in this video tutorial but uh, it turns out I'm just going to do animation in this one. I will cover colors in one of the upcoming parts. So this is the output which we're going to have at the end of this video tutorial series. So this is what you'll be able to do after you have finished watching this video. This is just simple animation in OpenGL in the double buffering mode. So uh, let's get started with animation. Animation. I'll sketch some basic ideas of uh, animation, how it works here. Um, now I assume that you are already aware of how simple animation in the movies or in the films work. Uh, it's like you have a, an object here in the first frame. Um, so animation is just basically clear and redraw uh, in the successive frames. So in the first frame you have your object here, in the next frame you'll have it here. In the next frame you'll have it here and then the next frame you'll have it here and this just keeps continue uh, it just continues so if your frame rate is sufficiently high that means you are displaying the frames at a faster rate and your distance that you move in each successive frame is sufficiently low that will that will result in a smooth frame a smooth animation so that is what we're going to do in opengl here uh, we'll be aiming at 60 fps 60 frames per second that means the screen will be refreshed 60 times in one second uh, so you need to draw a new frame every 1 60th of a second. That uh, We'll use this because most of the displays use this uh, frame rate and um, it is also sufficiently smooth so we'll not uh, have no distortion or any other problem. So now let, let's talk about op OpenGL. So uh, in OpenGL uh, displaying uh, frames is just uh, clear and redraw. We just draw some stuff. Uh, we clear it for the next frame and then we draw the stuff at a different position. So this is the frame buffer. So this is the display function. So one call in OpenGL, uh, one call to the display function op in OpenGL will be considered a single frame. So each time we call the display function, we display a single frame. So to uh, uh, make it look like animation, you need to call the display function again and again periodically and um, alter the primitive that you are um, showing. Also, you need to alter it, alter it periodically. Uh, so we'll just uh, work with the uh, geometry later on, but, but let's see the display function for now. So uh, First, clear, at the beginning, we clear the whole, the whole of the frame buffer. So we talked about the frame buffer in the previous part. It is just the area in the memory, which those the pixels that are that are going to be displayed on the screen. So um, we just clear the frame buffer. Uh, that that means we just clear the screen. Uh, you can use the names interchangeably here while understanding animation. So we just uh, clear the screen. We uh, initialize it. We draw a new primitive, and then we like flush it this is actually when it is being displayed on the screen but before that we're just editing the frame buffer so we just clean and we draw and for the next frame we clean it again and we draw it a different position so that is just uh, how simple animation in opengl works so uh, let's have a look here uh, so let's suppose this is a screen and we're drawing this primitive here and we're drawing this uh, for each successive frame uh, and uh, the problem here that might arise is that um, if your uh, geometry is too complicated to be displayed fully in one frame, like OpenGL is not able to fully render it in one refresh cycle, so only the half of the object will be displayed, like uh, your time has reached for the new frame to be displayed and uh, your frame is not being completed yet. So the incompleted frame which has not been uh, rendered completely will be displayed on the screen and that might continue for a longer period which might result in distortion of your images which is not quite desirable. So uh, this might occur in the machines which have low performance. So to solve this problem, you need to uh, switch to double buffer display mode. You need to switch to double buffering. So that'll, that eliminates this problem. And now let's see how to do that. So now in the main function, we called, uh, we ha ha have a call to the INIT display mode function. Uh, we initialize the display mode to be RGB, we also want it to be double buffered. So we'll call it glut double. So this is just, we just uh, combine these two display modes using the OR operator. So this means that we also want RGB mode and we also want a double buffer display mode. So we are requesting a double buffer, buffer display mode while initializing this. So we now have a double buffer display mode and let's see what that means. So in the double buffer display mode, you actually have two frame buffers. So let's suppose these are our two frame buffers. This is the first one and this is the second one. And now one of these frame buffers uh, is actually called the front buffer. 
let's suppose this is a front buffer and the other one is the back buffer so what's the difference is that the front buffer is the one which is currently being displayed so like this is the buffer which is on the screen right now this is the geometry which is on the screen which you see on the screen right now uh, and the back buffer is the one which you use to draw it is not being displayed on the screen it's just in the memory so the one which is being displayed will not be used to draw but you'll draw onto a different frame buffer you will draw an object at a slightly different position like you draw it in the middle in this one at a slightly different position in this back buffer and when you finish the drawing you can swap these buffers that means the front buffer will become the back buffer and the back buffer will become the front buffer so that'll it'll become the front buffer now and it'll become the back buffer so it'll be displayed now this buffer is being displayed now you can just see that the your screen changed the display it was first uh, displaying this and now it is displaying this so that is just uh, the next frame so now for the next frame you need to now the next frame um, all the operations that you carry out to draw stuff will be carried out on the back buffer so now we'll draw onto the back buffer uh, we'll clear it and we'll draw it at a slightly different position and now we'll swap the buffers again so animation in the double buffering mode is just redraw and then swap we just redraw uh, our scene on the back buffer and then we swap the buffer that means the back buffer will become the front buffer and now we change the other buffer so uh, you can see here uh, now in the display function the one thing you need to change is uh, instead of gl flush you need to call glut swap buffers means this all the operations that you were uh, carrying out will were being carry out, carried out on the back buffer the buffer which was currently on the screen was not being changed and now once you finish your drawing operations you can now change the back and the front buffers uh, after this call the this geometry will be displayed because uh, the front front buffer will become the back buffer and the back buffer will become the front buffer so now this geometry will be shown and for the next call to the display function this um, geometry um, the next uh, geometry which uh, the display function draws will be uh, drawn onto the back buffer again and after at the end of that the buffers will be swapped again so that's just redraw and swap again and again to display smooth animation so this eliminates the problem of your distorted images because uh, in case uh, your scene is this is um, let's suppose this is the front buffer for now and you're drawing on the back buffer and that you have reached the time in which time you need to swap the buffers M means you need to display the next frame so you need to display this frame in that time period um, your time has reached but you have not finished drawing your scene yet so what you can do is for the next frame you can keep displaying this buffer and you can finish your drawing and when you finish the drawing then you can swap the buffers so that means uh, this will result in a slightly slower display uh, slower um, display rate but uh, the it'll remove the distortion problem the image uh, the animation will be slow but th there'll be no distortion problem so that is how it eliminates that problem which was caused by single buffering mode so that's why um, in animation in OpenGL you always use the double buffered mode um, so we have the uh, glut swap buffers call at the end of this function uh, and now we have a working dub uh, double buffer display now uh, we have the output that we're going to, uh, I just showed you an application which showed you the output that we're going to get at the end of this um, video tutorial so let's start working on that now um, so first we need to have a look at the coordinate system so this is the coordinate system that we set using the orthographic projection in the previous part so the negative x axis is this side and the positive uh, so positive is this side and we go from minus 10 to all the way up to plus 10 so that is what we're going to use in the animation that I just showed you um, so let's suppose this is a screen and this is the x axis so we need to draw a cube at this point initially initially it is at this point and let's uh, we're going to draw it about this point so this will be negative uh, 10 on the x-axis let's just not worry about y-axis here so this cube will be drawn uh, for the next frame it will be drawn at this position for the next frame it will be drawn at this position so it'll it's this uh, position will go from minus 10 to all the way up to plus 8 so uh, now I cannot take it up to plus 10 because if I take it this position this side of the cube up to plus 10 then it will be drawn out of the screen we do not want this uh, since this uh, will keep the uh, side of this cube up to 2 units so plus 8 will be this and this will be 10 so minus 10 to all the way up to plus 8 
this square has uh, the side of uh, two units. So this is what, what we're going to do. So the minimum exposition is minus 10 and the maximum it goes all the way up to plus eight. First, let's implement the geometry and let uh, just change this thing. So vertex 2f. Uh, uh, now, this position, the position on the x-axis is variable. So it goes to minus um, from minus 10 to plus 8, but on the y-axis, it is just constant. It does not change. Um, so I need to de uh, define a variable here, which stores the exposition because I need to update it. I need to update this variable for each frame so that the exposition is changed for each frame. So initially it is minus 10. We'll assume it is minus 10 initially. So now we'll draw the cube at this position. Exposition and the y will be 1.0. And um, I told in the previous part, always remember the order should be anti-clockwise. Now I have the geometry here of the cube. Now, if you do not understand uh, what this is, uh, what this is, uh, it's just the geometry of the cube, which has a side of uh, two units, um, which uh, the topmost, uh, the top left corner of this cube is at this x position. So, if you do not understand this, you can just take a graph paper and take uh, any value of the x position and plot these points. You'll get a square, uh, get a square uh, which is, which has a top uh, left corner at this point. This is as simple as that. Um, now we have a cube and I can build and run to show you that if this geometry is correct or not. We have a cube at the desirable position and now we need to switch, uh, we need to change its x position periodically for each frame. Now the problem here is that the display function uh, is only being called once at the start of the application. We need to call it again and again within a uh, certain period of time. So to call this periodically, uh, I need to introduce you to another call back in the OpenGL uh, in the GLUT library. So this is GLUT timer function. So what this function does is that it calls a certain function after a specified amount of time. So let's uh, suppose, uh, so the first argument is the time after which you need to call the function. Let's, uh, it is in milliseconds. So 1000 milliseconds equal to one second. So uh, if you need to call the function after one second, you need to pass this as an argument. And now the second argument is what function you need to call. So that is a pointer to the function. So the function should be of type uh, return type void and should take an integer argument. So we need to first define that function here. We'll just call it timer and the argument type should be integer and we'll go down here. We'll define it. Now you can define a variable here, but we're not going to use this. So I'll just prefer not to make any new variables right here. Um, so this is our function the de uh, definition and the declaration up here and here I can register this. So this time of function will be called after uh, one second to call to this function. So after this function call, one second after this function call, this time of function will be called. And the third argument to this function is uh, an integer which is passed into the function, this integer argument here. So we're not uh, going to accept any values, so you can just keep it zero. Although you need to pass an argument, it is necessary. So just keep it zero and will not accept anything here. We're not going to use this feature of this callback. So uh, just keep it zero for initial time, uh, for uh, initially. Now this uh, only works for one time. So that you, you register this function and uh, for after this amount of milliseconds, this function is called and that's all. OpenGL is done here, but we need to keep call uh, keep calling this on periodically. So what we'll do is we'll register the timer function again here. And now here we'll take care of the time period. So we wanted 60 FPS means 60 frames per second means every 160th of a second, a new frame should, should be displayed. So our periodic function needs to be called every 160th of a second. So 1000 milliseconds equal to one second. And every 160th of a second, we need to call this fun uh, call the periodic function. That means 1000 milliseconds divided by 60 milliseconds. So after this much milliseconds, we need to call this again. And we'll just uh, pass the argument again timer means this function is going to call itself. After this call, this timer function will be called again. And third argument will just keep it zero again. So this will create a loop now. This timer function will call itself periodically after this much time. So in one, sec in one second, this timer function will call itself 60 times. So we have our periodic function here now. Now we need to do this for the display function. We need to call this 
in this period of time. So for that you'll use glut post redisplay. So what this function does is that it posts the urge for the redisplay to the op to OpenGL. That means after an encounter to this function call, OpenGL will call the display function the next time it gets the chance. So after glut post redisplay uh, has been called, uh, OpenGL will call the display function by itself. So that means uh, if this function, the timer function is being called 60 times in one second, so that means the uh, Read, uh, the redisplay function will be called 60 times in one second. That means the display function will be called 60 times in one second. So we have our desired frame rate. Display function is being called at the rate that we want. Now let's go over this mechani mechanism uh, once again. So uh, at the starting of a program, first this timer function is called. So after zero milliseconds, it calls this function. And now this function keeps on calling itself uh, every one sixtieth of a second and also calling the glut post tree display that means the display function also keeps on uh, being called 60 times in one second and we have uh, a new frame being displayed 60 times in one second but di but the difference is here is that um, every frame has same content um, the same geometry so we we'll, nothing will look like animation for now so if we need animation we need to change the geometry so if we change the exposition little by little for each frame it will appear as animation so uh, you can update the exposition uh, either in the display callback or in the timer function but I need to do uh, I like to do all my update stuff in the timer function so x position the global variable that we just declared here we, that we're using to draw the cube will update it plus equal to will update it at a sufficiently small value so just 0.15 this is going to be enough and now we need to uh, keep updating this until it has reached a, uh, reached a value of uh, maximum value of plus uh, plus 8. So it is initially minus 10, so it goes all the way up to plus 8. If x position is greater than, uh, sorry, less than 8, then it will keep on updating it. If it is uh, exceeded 8, then it will not update it anymore. So let's just see if this is working. There we go, we have a basic animation here. It goes all the way up to this side and then it stops. And now if you want to make it go back and forth, you can implement a very simple logic here. Uh, you can declare integer variable state to uh, uh, tell you that uh, if it is it, if it has to go right side or left side. So I'll just call it state. And if the this variable is one, positive one, then it means it, it is going to right. And if it is minus one, that means it is going to left. So, now I'll just use a switch in case of, sorry, if and we'll switch the state variable and we'll case, if it is positive one, that means it is going to the right side. That means we need to increase the exposition if it is less than eight. So if X position is less than eight, X position plus equal to 0.15. And if it has exceeded it, that means it now needs to go to the left side. That means state will become minus one. And now we'll break out of this. And now the second case, sorry, uh, minus one. If the um, state is negative, so that means we're going to the left side. So x position, so minimum x position is minus 10. So if it is uh, greater than minus 10, that means it still needs to uh, come more to the right side. So x position will keep on De decreasing now by the same amount. Uh, remember you need to keep this amount small or your animation will not look desirable. So else state equal to 1. So uh, if it has decreased um, below minus 10 that means it now needs to go to, to the right side that means we'll keep the state variable 1. We'll make it positive and now we'll break. So that uh, just uh, results in a back and forth bouncing of the object. Let's see if this is working. So there we go, we have our animation here, right and then left. And then it'll, it'll go right again. Now, if you want to increase the speed, do not change the frame rate. Keep the frame rate constant, just change the rate at which the variable is being updated. So that'll just increase the speed of the object. It is going twice the speed now. So that is how the simple animation works. Um, so hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Uh, if, if it was helpful, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching the video.
and I'll see you next time.